Good evening, I'm Shannon Hayes from Sapbush Hollow Farm where we aim to nourish and restore family, community, and planet. And this evening I'm going to start preparing one of my all-time favorite Christmas desserts. We call it the holiday pudding, some people call it Christmas pudding, figgy pudding, plum pudding, it doesn't matter, it all tastes good. But it's probably one of the weirdest desserts that you'll ever see demonstrated and it might be the only dessert that you'll ever see me demonstrate because it's truly a meaty feast of a dessert. Plum pudding actually dates back to the medieval period when fats and fruits and spices were blended with root vegetables and meat and shoved into the stomach of an animal and called a sausage. And plum was a term that referred to any dried fruit. The fats and the fruits and the spices were all used as preservatives for the meats and the vegetables. Over time, as dried fruits became more plentiful, this dessert started moving more toward the savory. And then there was a period of time when Oliver Cromwell took over in England and he banished puddings altogether because it was tied to evil druid traditions. But now it's back and we love them. And I really love it because one of the key ingredients is tallow, which we grow here and render ourselves. But the first step that I'm going to do tonight is just mix a few of these ingredients together and you'll see as you look here we have tallow, we have eggs, we have a mixture of dried fruits. This contains dates and figs and cranberries, apricots, golden raisins, the, zested of, the zest of an orange and a lemon, some sherry, and true to the tra English traditions we're using root vegetables. We have carrots and potatoes. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mix the fruits and the carrots together with the lemon zest. And then I'm going to pour this sherry over it and I'm going to let it sit overnight. If you want to see this recipe for yourself, it's on page 45 of Long Way on a Little. Um, and in that recipe, I mentioned that you only really need to let the vegetables and fruits sit in the sherry for an hour. But um, I want to go home tonight, and I know it's going to build up a lot of flavor if I let it sit for longer than that. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next stage. Okay, so we're on the next day, and these fruits and vegetables here have had a whole day to soak in the sherry, so they're quite delicious. And our next step is going to be to mix the potatoes and the fat in with this. So what I have here is some mashed potatoes, nothing added, just mashed potatoes, some heavy cream, you can use milk if you'd rather, eggs, salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, and some pecans. And we're just gonna mix up the mashed potatoes with the eggs and spices. So we've got the cream and the eggs, salt, and this was actually allspice, I misspoke and cinnamon. And the cool thing that you might notice is we're not actually adding any sugar into this recipe, which is not to say that it's low calorie by any means or low carb. There are a lot of dried fruits and the fruit is where all the sweetness comes from. So we're mixing these potatoes up and we're gonna combine them with the nuts and the fat in this big bowl over here. These are ground pecans, you can also use ground walnuts. And this is our mashed potato mix. And next, we're gonna add the tallow. And here goes the tallow. All that glorious grass-fed beef fat going in to make a yummy dessert. And now we're gonna just stir it all together. You will notice that we didn't add any flour to this. This is a grain-free recipe. The eggs are going to work with the potatoes to create the effect of flour to bind all of this together. Okay, so we're ready to fill our bowls. All we're gonna use are stainless steel bowls. You wanna make sure they're stainless steel because I'm gonna be steaming them in water in a few minutes. 
but I, it's all greased on the inside and I just pack this delightful mixture into the bowl and that forms my pudding mold. And seal it up and you keep doing that with bowls until you've used up all your pudding batter. Okay, so the next phase with our puddings, we have it in the mold, we have it sealed with foil on top, we have to steam it. So what we do is we're just going to put it in a pan like this, but we don't want the bottom of the, pot of the bowl to have direct contact with the actual pan. So ideally I'd put some pie weights or a rack in there, I didn't have those today. So I just put a couple of butter knives on there to hold it up off there. And then what I have here is water that just a few minutes ago was boiling hot. And I'm going to pour it in and until it comes halfway up the side of the mold. Then I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to simmer this for two hours. And it might be that uh, I have to add water periodically over that two hour time, so make sure you check on it every half hour or so. And after two hours, you take the mold, take the pudding out, and you open it up, and you use a cake tester to see if it comes out clean. If it does, then you're done, and you put the foil back on, put it in your refrigerator to ripen for about a week, or you can keep it in your freezer until Christmas if you like. And then on the day you're ready to feast, you just heat it in a 200 degree oven for 45 minutes, cover it with a uh, high 151 proof run, rum, set it on fire, and feast. After steaming it and chilling it, this is what it would look like. That's a half of one. And I'm just gonna cut myself a slice, and you can see all that, that's the solidified suet, but that's all gonna disappear when we make our pudding flambe. So that's what it looks like sliced and cold and you can either heat it in the oven whole or you can heat it by the slice if you want to eat it when no one's around. I'm just going to pop this into my toaster oven to heat for about 15-20 minutes while we make the hard sauce and then I'll set it on fire for you. While the pudding is warming I'm going to make the hard sauce and it's kind of a strange name because hard sauce isn't hard at all it's more like a spreadable sauce very similar to frosting but it's a little bit more firm and all you need to make the hard sauce which pairs with the pudding because the hard sauce is actually cloyingly sweet and the pudding has these nice bitter flavors and you put the two together and it's well it is orgasmic I'll just say that much it is my favorite dessert ever okay so what you need for hard sauce is powdered sugar Butter and a true traditional hard sauce should be made with should be made with European butter, which is at least 80% butter fat. This one I believe is 83. And I have some spices, some nutmeg and allspice, and some vanilla. And if you want it to blend really well, this is a trick that you really need to do. Remember, I always say the most important ingredient is time. And when making a hard sauce, this is your best step right here. It's to sieve out the powdered sugar. And if you're ever making frosting, and you wonder why your frosting is a little bit lumpy and not smooth enough, this is why. So I'm just gonna take a few extra seconds here and sieve that powdered sugar so that it's nice and smooth. Okay, so you see how much lighter, airier, much more like powdered snow that sugar is. Now, if we were um, doing this outside of the cafe, you could make a brandy sauce or a rum sauce where you would use brandy or rum in lieu of the vanilla. But we're gonna pour rum on the cake itself and set it on fire so that it's not actually alcoholic. Capture all that good rum flavor. Um, we don't need it in the sauces. If you need the recipe for this, it's um, two ounces of butter, nine ounces of powdered sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla, a half teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of allspice and I might add a little pinch of salt later we'll see how I'm feeling so I take that butter and that butter needs to be creamed so if you're gonna cream your butter you want to let it sit at room temperature for a couple hours you don't want it so soft that it's melting but you definitely don't want it hard and you're gonna take it to a hand mixer 
and just slowly start working it. And then I'm just gonna slowly add in the powdered sugar. And the vanilla. And the spices. So I wasn't happy with the consistency that was coming out. So I'm adding another two ounces of butter to this. Um, every time I make hard sauce, I actually never use a recipe. Um, I just always put it together on the fly. So you're seeing me cooking on the fly again, and I'm gonna add, so it's four ounces of butter this time to nine ounces of powdered sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. And then what I'm gonna do at the very end to get the texture that I want, I'm gonna slowly add in a little bit of heavy cream. And I want it to be just a touch more spreadable, so just a little bit more cream. Again, if you like measurements, I don't know, you can find a recipe online, I guess. But I'm looking the likes of that right about there. Okay, so let's have a talk about texture. When my mother always made hard sauce for Christmas for our puddings, she always made it really, really dry and clumpy which I really love. Um, I've also seen it made, and I have a recipe in Long Way a Little where it's a pour over rum sauce that you can use. And in this case, it's somewhere between the two because I wanna be able to spoon it into little monkey bowls and have people be able to spread it with ease. So honestly, there's a lot of room for interpretation here, but I think you get the idea. It's buttered and powdered sugar and have fun with it. Okay, let's set that pudding on fire. We have our hot pudding here. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky to serve because we didn't put any grains in it, but it still moves over to the plate well. Let's put a little bit of hard sauce on it. If you want to set your food on fire properly, don't just take any rum. You have to get high proof rum. This is 151 proof. It makes all the difference in the world and you don't want to let it wait too long for the fire. So, all you do is you pour it over your pudding, mm -hmm. and then with a match, there it goes. Happy holidays, everybody.